Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Now, what we're going to do today is I am going to check in this new board game to my collection. This is a copy of Scythe from Stonemeyer Games, who I do have to thank for sending me a review copy of this game. I have heard so many good things about Scythe. I have heard it's a fantastic game. I will admit I played it twice and it didn't go very well. Now, I'm pretty convinced it was a group problem and not a game problem. And my fans have been trying to convince me to give it another shot. So that's what I'm planning on doing. But before I can give it a shot, I've got to open up the box. So that's what we're here to do tonight is open up my shiny new copy of Scythe and check out what you get in the box. So what I'm going to do is start by cutting the shrink wrap off of this. Which I only left on to basically prove that, yes, indeed, I am just opening this. Um, no, I did play this, but it was way back when the game came out. So it's probably in like 2016, 2017. So it has been quite a while. There is a good chance I won't remember what all the different components are for. But you will get my first impressions of them, seeing them out of this box for the first time. So here's my new copy of Scythe, which we're going to crack open. So this is from Stonemeyer Games. I think most people are aware what Scythe is at this point. One to five players, age 14 plus. About two hours playtime, a little less, it says here. Let's crack this open. Oh, we started off with a good box fart. You always like a good box fart. I'm just going to put the lid somewhere over here out of the way. So what do we have first? <laughs> first off, I find this ironic. All right, you got side. Now go buy the digital edition. Like when you buy the digital edition, it's the first thing that pops up, a thing advertising to buy the board game. Then we have the rule book, I'm assuming. Yes, we have the rule book with the backstory. We're going to quickly flip through this. Oh, that is a fantastic component breakdown. Okay, thumbs up here. Both sides. I love that. More board game um, component lists should be showing me both sides of everything. The front and the back of the cards. Front and the back of the cards. Front and back. Even the front and the back of the dials. That's awesome. Then we have all the awesome components over here, the different structures and everything else. Lots of white space. Text is a little smaller than I would have liked, but I'm getting old, so that's more of a me problem than a you problem. So here we go. We're going to move it over here. So you can see different types of units. You got the starting setup. Lots of examples. I do enjoy that. Examples everywhere. Um, swapping besides the layouts. Lots of white space. Easy to read. Looks like a really good flow. You got an overview of the gameplay. Top row actions all listed here. Everything seems to be color coded. Color coded and with symbols, then bottom row actions. Lots of examples again. The different faction abilities. So there are five different factions included in the base game. How combat works, which I remember the combat dial being a big part of it. Uh, the factory in the middle of the board is way more important than you might think. That was something I learned when I played. And counters are ways to do stuff during the game. They're not as important <laughs> as, as uh, some people may lead you to believe. Um, you're trying to play for stars. Once you get in, whoever has, what is it, five stars or something like that wins. Uh, then there's game end scoring. Then we've got the characters and some highlighted rules. So a bit of background information. So what I do know should be in here too are solo rules. So what's interesting here is there's some good stuff here about want the rule, how, uh, a how to play video, rules in other languages, have questions, where to find more information. That's a great resource on the back here. Then we have a quick reference guide for setup. I always appreciate this. Quiz reference, sorry, not just setup, but setup, turnover, important concepts, uh, top row actions, combat, and bottom row actions. I love these because they're usually way easier to teach. Um, once you learn the game, I can just teach from this. What I don't like is I only see one of these. I would have liked to have seen five. Next, we have the achievement sheet. So there must be some kind of achievements you can unlock. First winners each year, first winners with $100 or more. Okay, this is something I've never actually seen. So the people I played this with did not use this. So there's an achievement sheet. And here we go, the Automa rules. Um, these came from a specific company. I forget it's on the top of the box. Um, that tells you how to play solo. From what I hear, the solo in this is fantastic. It's not something I plan on uh, rushing out to try, but I probably will try it at some point. Now I'm going to point out something that just popped up while I was doing this. Check this out. On the side of the box, it tells you how to put everything back together. Where the player tokens go, where the miniatures go, I really like this. That's nice. That's a nice touch. All right, so punch boards. Now, one of the things I know I'm going to want to buy is the metal money, <laughs> because I know that's a thing. So you have structure bonus tiles here and various uh, um, 
coins, and then you have the multiples. So if you don't have enough of a component, you can use those. Uh, the coins are going to punch. So they have a hole in the middle here. Not a lot of punch boards if this is it. Like two punch boards, they look not identical because these are different, but the same number of things. Then we get the board. I will not be able to fit this all on my screen here. All right. I still can't, I can't see to see if I have this all in camera. There, I think between here, I'm peeking through. We have the board and then a massive version of the board on this side. I'm not sure, like, do you need two copies of this? It's like huge. It's like a massive version of the board on this side that looks like you need two copies. I apologize for trying to hold this up. Big board. Then we get the rest of the components. Baggies. Thank you, Stonemeyer Games. Always appreciate baggies with our games. We get cards. We'll get to those in a second. Component holders. Love it. Love the fact these are in here. Little component holders to hold stuff. Looks like two of them. Two little component holders. Uh, for building the dials. The other halves of building the dials. We have more cards. More cards. Oh, some additional punch boards. More cards. All right. Uh, here's all the stuff I haven't unboxed. Here's the stuff I have. So what I'm going to do is grab these from the bottom. So these are the player boards. What is fantastic about these, hopefully you can see that, is they are dual layered. They are notched. So you can kind of see there that they hold cubes and stuff. And you can tell they're dual layer boards. And you have the different factions. And when I was talking about top and bottom actions, that's what you have here is your top actions and your bottom actions. So you have your various factions here. I'm going to flip through those quickly. Again, I love the fact these are dual layer right from the box. Like This isn't like a deluxe version of Psy. This isn't upgraded. This is just what you get when you pick up Psy. Then we're going to go over here to wooden components. I'll save the cards and stuff for last. And you know what? I'll do... Ooh, okay. Do resources. So you've got uh, like a stone style resource. Wooden. Unique shape. You've got wood, which again is a different shape. I do appreciate that. Um, I play with gamers that have some visibility, visual, visual issues. Uh, visibility, not visibility. And having uniquely shaped things does help. Then you've got your, your looks like oil cans. And lastly, food. We got an extra baggie we're just gonna save for later because I may want it. So yep, food which having just finished a uh, game of Charterstone, that looks very familiar. <laughs> then we have all the player resources and different player colors. So we're gonna start off, we have stars and cubes. I don't think I'm gonna bother taking these out of the bag, you can see them. Stars are tracking victory points, right? And the game is a race to so many points. It might be six, because there's six stars. And then there's also resource cubes. And again, you have that in the five player colors. Note there is no green, that is for color blindness friendliness. Color blind friendliness, I guess is the way to word it. Then we're going to grab the yellows here. So we have other, we have our battle token, as well as round markers and a very traditional looking pawn. Again, you're going to find that in all the player colors. And then you have the four buildings you can build during play, as well as a cylinder. Again, these, there are four unique shapes. Um, you're going to recognize some of these from other games as well. Stonemire does a good job of reusing molds, which is actually a good thing. It's a fantastic thing. So those all go back here in the bottom. I'm sure some of these will get put into these eventually. Then we have miniatures. People dig the minis in this game. All right, miniatures inside. What I was trying to do was lift these up so you can kind of see them like this, because I figured that was probably the best way to do it without holding up each individual one. One of the things that most people do enjoy about these miniatures is there's a character with an animal companion, which is pretty dang cool. Um, I can try to pull out one to get you a better detail, but... Honestly, come on, it's someone with a bear, how cool is that? And then each faction also has its own unique mecha, which are somehow in here in their own case. There we go, which again, I think you can already see pretty well, but I'll pull one out. So you have the evil red. It looks evil because like, there's like sides on the end of a mecha arms and then the white miniatures. I love the giant wheel at the bottom of these ones. Of course, many people paint these up. 
I probably won't do that. More of a spider shape on this one. And the black, very blocky, walky looking mechs. So you have all the miniatures that come with the original scythe in a nice plastic case to keep everything safe and undamaged. So we're going to put that back in here. Somehow kind of flattish under those. All right, next thing I want to highlight are the faction boards. So the neat part here is these kind of combo with these. So your faction board's gonna go with, with so like each faction can be played with a different one of these boards, right? So you get more combinations. I will note that uh, double layer boards have a slight problem of warping and there is a little bit of that going on. It's not terrible, but worth pointing out is that's not, like it's just barely, it's kind of bowed just a little bit. Uh, these boards also just a little tiny bit. It's not bad at all though, I've seen way worse. So various, the, the different factions, which of course go with the different miniatures and the different player colors. This one in particular has got quite a bit of a curve to it. Yeah, and I'll put that under my copy of uh, something heavy like Gloomhaven and it'll be fine in a bit. Uh, then we have the combat dials that will need to be assembled. Uh, these are for determining random combat values. Then we're gonna have, and again, you're gonna assemble those using the little plastic clip things. Now we got cards to look at. We got all kinds of cards to look at. So here we go. So four different packs of cards come inside. Uh, these may have quick, easy to release things on them, but I just grab a toppy knife most of the time and cut them open because it's quicker. So first off we have, I can't remember what they're called, but they're basically personal goals. Um, that tells you, well, Whistle while you wait for the geese to cross the road. Gain $2 and one popularity. Pay the girl for her pet geese, or as you call them, dinner. Pay $2 to gain four food. Or feed the geese to your animal and calm the, claim the farm as your own. Pay two popularity to build the structure. So this is, a, they give you kind of multiple point choice questions. Uh, featuring really cool looking artwork. Scythe is very well known for its artwork. Like, look at that. That's just cool. Farmer's field with mechs in the background. There are a ton of these, I will say. Um, they may be faction specific, because I'm seeing a faction symbol in this one corner. No, they all have that symbol, so that's not a faction symbol. So here's a whole bunch of these, all with awesome artwork, very clear text. I like the fact it's bolded. Very clearly tells you what you're gonna get. If I remember correctly, these involve going to a specific spot on the board, but again, it's been a while since I played. So that's one set. So we have, so these appear to be possibly in player colors. Nope, definitely not player colors. All right, next sets of cards, we're gonna put the. So what we have here is move worker. Uh, okay, automa turn order, attack mode versus worker, attack mode versus combat unit. These, sorry, these all appear to be for the automata rules. Automa, automata, however you pronounce it which has cute little eyes. These may also be for the Atoma rules because they also have the same symbol on them. Yes, they are. These are actually for playing the solo game. So we'll put those with these. And then again, these have the same symbol. So probably similar, similar type of thing. So obviously here's your different, <laughs> different difficulty levels, including auto meta up to Ulta, Ultima Sina. So you got a whole bunch of cards for playing solo. Then we have higher ground advantage. Control at least three mountain territories at the end of your turn. So here are the personal goals. I got these confused. See, they're similar -ish cards. I get why I got them confused. Again, awesome artwork. Um, harvest advantage. Control at least three farm territories until the end of your turn. And so on. There's a ton. Look at, look at how thick this deck is. That is a lot of different options lot of different options there with all with the awesome artwork that you see through outside. Next, deck of cards, big chunky ones again. Reference cards, expected to find these in here somewhere. Two-sided reference cards, awesome. Always appreciate reference cards. These interesting looking cards with cities on them, I have the upside down. That shows pay, produce, and move on all of them with different artwork and different combinations of symbols. 
These might be the things you draw from the main city in the middle. Again, it's been a long time. Again, I love that artwork. The artwork is awesome. Iconography is also very clear, both colored and with symbols. And then we have, it looks like starting setup, enemy faction riverwalk, enemy faction riverwalk access to home. Oh, this is more reference to show where the rivers are and how it works, who can cross where. And combat and aggressive movement rule summary on the back of each of these. Useful stuff. Finally, the Hobbit size cards. I am not a fan of Hobbit size cards, but they're a thing. Would prefer full size cards in almost every case. These all have the same back. And basically show different combat values. There's a bunch of fours, a bunch of twos. They all have the same artwork for the same number. Bunch of threes. And then some fives. Combat cards that you're going to tuck into your combat dial when you go to attack. Semi-deterministic combat systems. There you go. All the cards you get with Scythe put into different piles there. Now we're just going to put everything back in the box. I'm going to grab everything back. I got to say, box insert, not much. It's kind of strange that they kind of show you this thing I told you about, but it does. Resources. See, it's telling you to put the game board in the bottom. So they actually want you to remove the box insert. So that's interesting. They actually expect you to remove the, the cardboard shipping insert in favor of organizing things better afterwards. That's, a, that's an interesting. You don't tend to see that often. And yes, I'm going to hate myself later for putting in all these cards loose. But I don't care right now. Future me will hate me when this gets shaken up. So yeah, not, not. Lots of minis. Tons of cards. Very large, thick board. Two-sided. Um, rule book. Reference. Automata. Uh, this, the achievements. Again, I don't know actually what those are. And only two punch boards. Not a lot of individual components. Oh, and of course, the chance to buy the digital version with the QR code. So there you go. What you get with Scythe. There you have it. What you get inside Scythe from Stonemeyer Games. I am looking forward to giving this game another shot. Again, I played it a long time ago. It wasn't the best experience, but I think it was the people I played with, not the game. Looking forward to figuring out that for sure. Thank you for joining me for this unboxing. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Head to our webpage, tabletopbellhop.com, and listen to the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast on your podcatcher of choice. If you appreciate these videos, be sure to hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you can get notified when the next one goes live. Uh, that's it for my look at Side tonight. Thank you, and game on.